Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So today we're doing a little bit of work on the I30 N that we have. We've got a track day coming up on Monday at Bedford Autodrome. So we've got a few things that we need to we need to sort out on this car. So we've done the uh, the exhaust. There's a few mods we've done in here before. It's had a, a GPF uh, delete. It's also had a forged induction kit, the four inch one, large one, um, be a turbo inlet. It's got a tuning box on it, it's been on the on the dyno at uh, GM Imports, local company to us, really well known. Um, made 325 brake, so it doesn't hang around. Um, so today we're going to put some uh, DS2500s on the front. I'm going to take these alloys off. We've got a set of uh, semi forged alloys with our travel lights on for track days. Um, so, yeah, we'll get cracking with that and we'll, uh, we'll update you and let you know how it goes. So, what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll pop the bonnet and I'll show you around a few of the mods that we've done. Um, how how it's gone so far, and then uh, I'll update you with the brakes and the, the new alloys to go on it as well. So how the Forge Motorsport um, air intake here? Yeah? It's quite big. It's big on the battery. Um, that goes from the from the actual air intake to the turbo. It reduces it just before the turbo, so it's four inch from the filter back. Um, you also get a bigger uh, turbo inlet, so the turbo inlet's slightly larger. Um, it reduces down to the the stock position, um, maximizes the airflow, makes a really good noise. You can hear all the turbo chatter and all the rest of it, which is quite impressive. Um, it's got a DTUK tuning box. Like I said before this was dyno at um, 325 brake. At a, a local um, well known establishment, GM Imports. Big shout out to Jurgen there. Um, yes, it's, it's quite impressive. Um, we've taken the, the DPF's been removed, we've also got a larger um, rear section of the, the downpipe that's been increased to 3 inch. And we're looking at doing a 3 inch mid pipe as well. And you've already heard it, it sounds quite good. So, stock, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty decent. So, yeah, today we're going to. All the engine work's done for now. Um, today we're going to do the DS2500s on the front, the pads, because they're quite low. And then we'll fit the, uh, the race wheels that we've got with the R-Treble 8s on. So I'll, uh, I'll keep you updated with some footage of that. So as you can see here, how I now use studs, the set studs, and um, when you have your retainer nuts or lug nuts, work, work really well when you're um, doing track days, or just generally taking the tires on and off. And this hassle keeps it in place, nice and easy as you see. So these are the wheels that are going on. 
use the semi forged. We've got the proxy or treble eight. Um, they don't want track deal with these. Noticeable difference. This is a stock wheel, this is a 19 inch. Um, the ones that were put on are for the track deal are 18 inch, so we'll drop down the size because 19 is quite harsh on the ride. Um, we found the 18 performs better. It's a slightly wider offset. Um, like I said, the semi forge as well, the two forge wheels. You can see that there, semi forge, so they're quite light. Um, so the standard wheel is a 235 35 19, and with the R travel we went for a 235 40 18. Like I said a slightly wider offset. Um, the car performs really, really well with these wheels, as you'll see on the follow up video when we're, we're doing a track day at Bedford. So, yeah. So these have um, these have done one track there. Uh, they've been really well, scrubbed in well. Can't complain at all, really. So we'll get these on now, and we'll um, we'll see what the weight difference is. So we're going to fit the um, Ferrero DS 2500s to the front. Um, Awesome pads, the brakes on this are really good. We've done 10,000 miles now, that's including two two track days. Um, as you can see, the pads are the stock pads are worn there now. Discs are fine. Um, so, yeah, we're going to change these and we'll put the Ferrero racing pads in. And we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. So these are the stock pads. Like I said they've done 10,000 miles. Um, the car's a 69, 69 plate car, or 2019. Um, it's not too bad. They've been phenomenal from the off, really. I'm just starting to fade a little bit when you're braking really hard. So, I'll replace that with these ones. more meat on them. Compound looks pretty similar. Obviously they would have been channel in the middle so we'll fit those. Um, we'll follow the bedding procedure and we'll see how it goes. Like I said the brakes are really good in this and from the factory so I'm expecting them to be a lot better than what they were which is only a good thing. So what you want to do is we need to take the, uh, the actual whole cover assembly away from the hub. Um, gives you access to get them out, get the pads off and then we'll also take the two uh, carrier bolts off the back where the slide back and forth right against the piston um, give it all a good clean fit the uh, the new new pads to the carrier ensure the piston's pressed all the way back 
and then uh, refit everything. Um, done a little bit of general maintenance in between on the other side, just basic cleaning and greasing the bowls to uh, prolong things for the future. So I do is I turn this round. On the back you have basic tools I've been using, it's a 17mm for the, the actual caliber of the hub and then for the carrier, the slider, it's a 14mm with a 17mm open-ended spanner on this side just to steady it and then just a um, little soft mallet for a gentle persuasion a little pry bar Break clean on some uh, some copper slip. Like I said this car is pretty new, so it's not too bad for getting things off. Nothing's rusty yet. It's actually quite impressive underneath this car, everything's been checked, um, all your bolts have got little, little marks on where someone's actually physically checked to make sure they're all tightened. Uh, the only issue we have with this car is it's only recently just been fixed, so there was a slight click, uh, which I thought was um, an issue with the steering column because that's that, that can be an issue. Um, and what happened was when in the high end eye, the guys had a look at it, serviced it. And they noticed one of the uh, the marks where the bolts had been marked with pen. Um, they noticed it was slightly out, so they, they checked the tall figures and it was ever so slightly loose. Um, and the click went away, so... It's, um, it's, it really is quite impressive, someone took the time to check everything. And not only check it, but mark it, the shorts being checked. Obviously you've got here, brake hoses, all the subframe bolts. It's pretty cool. This car comes with adaptive um, electronic suspension, so it's all controlled via, yeah, uh, handles really well. So that's all this in the back of the caliber to the hood. So now we get your 40mm on here, 70mm on the back. Lock one off, gently turn it, that stops it from spinning. So we've just wound the, the piston back. I say wound, it just pushes back on these. So then you just have to uh, put the balls back in just to kind of react to push it in. If you leave the lid open, it doesn't force against anything. Um, shouldn't be an issue. So it's a piston all the way back there now. Everything's okay. No issues there. So again, hang that in there. I just put these bolts in just to react off the, uh, the actual caliber itself to push the, the piston back in. You don't have to go too far. So we have the new pads. I put a little bit of um, cut anti seize on the back. So try not to touch the faces of the, uh, the pads. Same on here, it's just a habit I've always had. So yeah, one of these goes against the piston.
There's actual marks on the top where they sit. It's just a case of pushing to the location. I said that one goes on the back side where the, where the actual piston is, which will be here. So you have little locating lugs, you just push in, a bit of persuasion, push them in, line them up, that's that one in, and again with the front one. in the way. That goes through. That goes down. And there like so. And what I do now is all the bolts that I'm going to be using again. Or new bolts, whatever you use if you prefer. A slip on the threads. Not too much, but everything around here sees quite a bit of heat. So anything you can do to kind of make things easy for the future is uh, gonna help. No one likes uh, seize bolts or bills for having to get out seize bolts, replace parts. Just not to cover the threads, take away all the excess. There you go. So, I've given this a clean. I've also given the everything else around here clean. So what we're going to do now is take the carrier assembly, push your pads back so you can get them over the brakes, like so. Your bolts all greased up in the back, just finger tight. Same again, the bottom. pads in. I'm just slightly, don't jam them against it but just gently. Take this. Because you push this all the way back it should just slide slide all that. Without any issues as such. A little slider there, the little sliders in the back of the carrier there um, they move back and forth, they react against the piston. Um, should be free running back and forth. Push them back small bolts back in. And go ahead and nip these up. You'll find the, the slider arm wants to spin. So you just put your open ended spanner on the back of it. Go. 
go for the big bolt to hold your whole caliber to the hub. Two of those on the back. Nothing has to be absolutely crazy tight. Obviously we'll tote these up. Just give them a good nip one out. And that's it. Job done. There we go. Upgraded pads ready for a tractor. As easy as that. So I've got the car in the corner ways now and as you can see it's really well set up on the battery. We're looking at 1446 total and the balance is really well proportioned as well which will explain how it's uh, really nicely handling. Really really well set up. That's with the uh, that's with the forged, or the semi-forged, two forged wheels, um, 18 inch, wider offset, and the, um, the Toyo Ultra Blade semi-slicks. So yeah, I'm really pleased with that, as you can see. So I so said the car comes with 19s of stock, um, but the, the ride's really harsh, especially with the adaptive suspension. It's a little bit higher, but not too fast. Like I said, it's only for track days. So once we've done a few track days, or if there's a gap in between, put the stock wheels back on, and then we use these um, use these as and when. So yeah, really happy with it.
Oh, my God.